Good morning, everybody. Rico McAdory here. <laughs> and I'm excited simply because it's a great day. I'm up real early in the morning. <laughs> and it feels great to get up early and walk. Uh, so the Lord really woke me up this morning about, about 5.15. I'm about 525, something of that sort. And I had a friend of mine call me. And we always talk about the kingdom. And what a powerful exchange. What a great way to get the day started with the kingdom in mind, spending time with God, listening. And then when he speaks, could be him directly, could be audibly, and then it could be through somebody else. And uh, through my brother this morning, it was very powerful to hear. And we talked about kingdom mandate, right? So for those of you that don't know, I'm Rico McAdory, author of the book, Your God-Given Identity, uh, identity leadership specialist, providing leadership techniques that build character. And I'm always big on helping people win from the inside out because it was something I had to do personally to impact or change the trajectory of my focus from exterior or external to internal. And so when I talk about your God-given identity, it's really about discover, maximize, and manifest the real you. Well, guess what? That is really the kingdom because when you become born again, you are now born into a royalty. You're not born into just into a religion. You're not born into just being a church member. You're not born just to be mm, just to be indoctrinated uh, from an external point of view. But when you become born again, you actually now, the lights have been turned on in your life, and now you can see who you really are. That's the big thing about it. So an exchange took place. <laughs> you transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of heaven. So now... You have been transferred from one kingdom to the other, and the kingdom you've been transferred into, now you are now a king. Hmm. Sisters, you're a queen. And so, you are a king or queen in the kingdom, and you represent as an ambassador, the greater king. So your kingdom mandate is not about all the time what you want, when you want, the way you want it. I'm not saying God is not all about answering your prayers. I'm not saying he's not about uh, giving you the desires of your heart because that scripture it is. But notice that scriptures like that. He says in Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So in other words, you seek him, you desire him. He gives you the desire to what he already gave you or what he's already made available to you because your heart is connected to him. What we're saying is in order to walk in your true kingdom mandate, you've got to connect. You've got to connect with your creator simply because he made you for a unique reason. You're not made just to take up space. You're not made just to hope and wish you find something in life that's valuable. You've already been made valuable. You've already been entrusted with seed. When you become born again, what that means is you now have the capability to see what's already been there. In other words, when you become born again, <clears throat> it's like when you turn on a light switch. When you turn the light switch on, darkness has to leave. Darkness doesn't 
ask to leave dark darkness doesn't dark look darkness when you flip that light switch darkness leaves hey good morning lady t darkness leaves because you have now turned the light on well when you become born again the light of the Lord now is on the inside of you and what's been there all along now you can clearly see you may be aware that you need to change you may be aware of some things that need to take place but to in order to go from self-awareness to self-discovery to significance it's really in the kingdom of God and and really fulfilling your kingdom mandate we're hearing a lot about the word mandate you know what I'm talking about well, you're seeing a natural illustration of what a mandate is. Well, here's the thing I challenge people. What is your kingdom mandate? What is the original reason of why you were made? And when I ask people that question, what most people tell me is, well, I'm here. My, my why is my kids. Well, I have a I, I respond back with this. I say, well, that's very noble and that's very, very, that's very sincere. But, but my question to you is, what was your why before your son or daughter got here? What was your why before you got married to your wife or husband? What was your why? What was the man? What, see, once you understand the, that you were made, you came to earth already loaded. You came already loaded with seed that releases or produces fruit. When you have that mindset, no matter what happens in where you position, we understand that through a kingdom mandate, wherever we've been deployed, see, in the kingdom, it's really about being deployed. Many people worry and, and, and want to be employed, but really in the kingdom, it's about being deployed, as Dr. Miles Monroe would say. Because when you're deployed, that means you're being planted somewhere to produce fruit. You being you being plant you being placed to re, to produce increase you being placed to invade. Look at that, not in a bad way, but in the kingdom, your kingdom mandate is not to take sides, but your kingdom mandate is to take over. And we mean that because whenever a kingdom takes over, what ends up happening is. It, that's nothing more than a natural expression of colony or colonize, colonization. That was really God's original intent. When he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. That, that's in Genesis 1 verse 26. That is his original mandate to colonize earth with his glory. He wanted to colonize the, in, the, in the unseen spiritual world of heaven he wanted to colonize earth with that culture and manage it and work through us. So when you really begin to understand you were sent here, not by accident, but on purpose, you begin to realize that I'm a king or I'm a queen and I've been sent to invade and transform the culture from a broken state into an image of heaven on earth. Well, you understand that. You understand the value and the power of the kingdom mandate. It's not to restrict, it's to release. We understand, change your view about authority. When we say the word authority sometimes, we can look at it and be like, it means restriction. Well, no, it doesn't. When you understand authority from a kingdom's perspective, you understand that it's really influence. You are influencing the culture with the authority that God has given you. People are trying to say, well, I'm walking in authority. I have authority. Well, how can you take authority when you don't know who you are first and then you don't know what you've been authorized to do? So your kingdom mandate is really your God-given identity and your God-given authority hmm. unlocking who you really are and what you've been assigned to do. Some of us have a key, but it's not giving us access to the doors that we, that key is supposed to fit through. So we're trying to fit into something that we doesn't, that doesn't fit us. Or we try to fit something, trying to fit an environment 
that we that that really is not the domain God has really positioned us to be in. So this is just an encouraging reminder, a kingdom mandate. We see mandate, the word thrown around, but a kingdom mandate is what have you been assigned by God to do? What have you who are you? Why are you here? And what have you been authorized to do? When you get clarity about that, you are dangerous to a controlling and power and system trying to keep you uh, to sit down on your gifts, sit down on what you've been given. I think that's Donald Lawrence that says that in his song, uh, The Gift, the systems of the world will try to take your confidence. The systems of the, for these systems were designed to make you sit down on your gift. And so when you make a decision and instead of looking externally, outside, trying to find fulfillment, trying to look to other people and look to other things, when you really look at who's on the inside of you and you, you, you connect with him and you can now position yourself to get clear on the inside and you realize that even if everything shuts down, you still have the power and the capability because the greater one is in you to release, to create and release or release and create. So we're in a position now where you can no longer just settle and hide behind a veil of a certain security, which was really a false security, but it really kept you in a broken state. Now what we're in, you, there's being pressure. That's everything else is crumbling. But guess what? On the outside is crumbling, but on the inside, that's what's bubbling up. And that's what people are waiting on. <laughs> Look, the people of, the, of this earth are waiting for the sons and daughters of God to rise up. And that's what it's really about. It's about really invading territory for the kingdom. And if you don't understand that in the kingdom, the way to access the kingdom, yes, I'm not being religious. I'm just coming from a kingdom perspective or relationship basis. The way to get into the kingdom, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So to access this kingdom, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords that we go through. And 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 once you turn your life over to him. And once you let him lead you and you find who you really are and unlock that, everything else comes alive. So that's my encouragement to you this morning kingdom mandate your kingdom mandate what is it what who are you why are you here get clarity on that and then when you get clarity on that it positions you to understand what you have been authorized to do and as you see that then the spirit of god can lead you on how to unlock it or what path what's already been prepared for you I'll do a video later, maybe between the difference between stewardship and ownership. You see, in the king, see, in ownership, yes, there's a thing called ownership faith now. My apostle was talking about it last night. But when you look at it from a kingdom perspective, the most effective thing about ownership is that you are a steward. And really, a steward is of a higher priority than just an owner as we look at it in the natural. Oh, in terms of our own empire building and all like that. See, when you're a steward of the greater king who owns everything, you really have to consult him on how he wants to use what's been trusted to you to watch. So your gift to speak, your gift of music, you get, he gave you that for a reason. How are you stewarding that? How are you leveraging that? How are you growing that? Whatever your gift is with your hands, with your speaking, with your, with your cooking, whatever that gift is, don't allow yourself to sit down on the gift. Ignore your kingdom mandate just to fit into something you've outgrown or to fit into something that you've been called to actually confront, but also at the same time, elevate and change the culture for the kingdom of God. That's all I want to say today, right now. I pray you were blessed by this. Let me know in the comments. This is not just a religious conversation I'm having. This is a kingdom reality your kingdom mandate, your purpose, your identity is much bigger than you really think. It's, 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 so, it's so much bigger than you. The very thing that you thought you're going to find out when you get clear on who you are, you'll, be like, you'll realize the thing that you've been doing as a hobby and the thing that you've been doing 
uh, thinking that it's just something to get by. You don't think much about it. You're going to find out that's the thing you've been having on the inside of you all along. And the very thing you've been praying for, the resources you've been praying for, are really connected in how you release that which has already been given to you. So I'm Rico McAdory, and I'm going to sign off for right now. Have a blessed and empowering day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.